We're going to continue our series, and actually the last one, of our personalities um, talks. And today we're going to be talking about the phlegmatic personality. And as you can see by the title, a laid back dude, and it can be a laid back gal or whatever you want to call it, but the phlegmatic personality is the easiest person to get along with. They are very laid back. So we're going to just jump right in. And um, I do have some of this personality, but you may hear me talk more about my brother Matthew because I think he is 100% phlegmatic. <laughs> um, the strengths of a phlegmatic personality is peaceful and relaxed. Um, a lot of times you'll find these people just... You know, whatever comes, it's fine, just, you know, very peaceful. They'll be the ones that are kind of in the corner, not talking very much, just very quiet and peaceful. They're very consistent. Everything is usually the same with them. They don't like things that'll, you know, be out of the ordinary. It's just very consistent, very the same. Um, they're very sympathetic. Um, and I think as a nurse, this is a little bit hard for me because I, I do, when I have patients that are hurting or um, are in need of something, it's, it is good and it's bad because I do, my heart goes out to them. If I can't do, you know, I can't relieve their pain as much as I want to or something like that. But it also helps me because I then will be very hard on the doctors to try to get something for them. So does work both ways. They're very agreeable. Even if maybe they don't fully in their minds agree with something, they'll just go along with it because they don't want a confrontation. They are creative and imaginative. Um, my brother Matthew, just um, yesterday actually, I got a text on, picture on my phone and it was from him on dad's cell phone. And it was a picture of him standing next to this very big wooden chair that he had made. And he, Matthew is incredible with wood and tools and his mind, I mean, he just kind of thinks them up in his mind and he'll search on the internet for a pattern and he builds really beautiful things. Um, observant. The, that kind of goes along with being sympathetic. They, will, they may not look like they're even paying attention, but they'll notice if you're happy, if you're sad or anything like that. They're very observant of people and of situations. Um, they're inoffensive, which kind of goes along with being agreeable. They will be very careful about what they say because they don't want to make anybody mad or offend anybody. They have a good sense of humor. Now, this is the one that you may not, some of you may have seen it in Matthew, but Matthew, he'll be as quiet as a mouse, and then all of a sudden he'll say something that'll just have all of us rolling on the floor. I mean, and he just, he'll just say it just like a matter of fact thing, and then, then he'll start laughing because he realizes that it was funny. <laughs> but he has a very good sense of humor, even though he's very quiet as a mouse. <laughs> um, and because they're very quiet, they're good listeners. They'd rather listen than do the talking. Some weaknesses are that they are shy. Um, they don't like to get up front very much, and they don't really like to talk open up or talk to people that they don't really know, um, and that they are, they are quiet, goes along with being shy, but they are quiet even around people that they know, but they can get into conversation as long as you engage them. Um, phlegmatics can be lazy and unmotivated, and this is something that I struggle with. If I might have a list of things to do, but you know, some days I'm just like, I just don't feel like doing that. And I, you know, I know that I need to get it done and all of that, but that is something that I just have to say, okay, I gotta motivate myself, I gotta get this done. So that's, that's something that phlegmatics struggle with. Um, they can be uninvolved. Just like I said, they may be the person that if they're in a big group, they'll be just sitting there, just listening, not really engaging in the group conversation or whatever the group is doing. Um, they can discourage others. Being unmotivated or lazy or quiet, if there's something that 
is going to happen that might be fun or take a lot of work, they might be like, oh, you know, well, let's not do that right now. Um, let's do something, you know, more fun or that doesn't take as much work. Um, they also resist change. I don't like change. I like to remain the same all the time. And if there's something that needs changed, it's very hard for me to change. And that includes things about myself, like weaknesses that I have. If I see them, it's very hard for me to change. I think, oh, you know, I'll deal with that later. Or, oh, it's not so bad. I try to talk myself out of changing something. Um, they can be slow. Um, just that relaxed and peaceful manner can make them a little bit slow to actually finish things or to do things. Um, and easily sway. That's that part of being agreeable and not wanting to offend people. If there's something that's going on that needs some sort of decision made, then they will just kind of go along with what the crowd is doing and um, not really make a firm decision for themselves. You know, they may, they don't want to be that odd one out. They want to be along with the crowd. They don't want to offend anybody. In the Bible, there are several examples of characters that are phlegmatic, but one of the biggest ones is Abraham. He was a man of faith, and he did many times stand for God and, and trust God. But there are many different t um, times in his life where the phlegmatic characteristics really do show. Um, he did show that fear, doubt, but also the peaceful side of him and adaptability. Um, in Genesis, we see his story, and it demonstrates how Abraham was fearful. He didn't want anybody to be... Um, offended by him, he wanted everybody to be happy, and so there were times like when God told him that he was going to have a son, and it was taking a little bit longer, and his wife was wanting a child, and his wife told him to take her servant, and so he went along with that. Even though in his mind he was thinking this isn't right, he went along to make her happy to fulfill his desire to be a father, and of course that didn't turn out so well. But that was more the easy route at first that he thought. Of course it didn't end up that it was easy, but that was his thought in, in doing that. It was going to be the easy way out. Um, he felt that God had forgotten him, so he was kind of like just a little bit depressed in the way that he he was longing for God to answer the prayer, the promise that he had given him, but yet he had to take matters into his own hands because it was not quick enough for his comfort. Um, Abraham was a father of, great, of a great nation, and he had a peaceful side of him when he was dealing with his family. We see that the story of him with Lot and the time where there was strife amongst the, their two camps, his camp and Lot's camp. And he decided that it would be best to avoid all of that conflict for them to separate. And being older in that time, the older one should have chosen, you know, what land he was going to take and say, Lot, that's yours. But he was very diplomatic. He didn't want to cause any strife. So therefore he said, Lot, what area do you want? And Lot chose, there was no strife, and they went their own ways. He was a very unselfish person. 